Hello, my name is Paul Rang. I'm a VFX content creator, and this is my second video regarding smart materials. And in this video, I've created a few that you can use. So if you don't know what smart materials are or how useful they can be, you can check out my first video, which I'll leave a link in the description. In the first video, I show you how to build them, promote parameters to the top of your material, use bait maps to drive your textures, and also how to export them and add them to your shelf. In this second video, I'm just going to show you three new smart materials I've made that you can use in any of your projects or use as a template for one of your materials so you don't need to start from scratch. You can save them in your shelf, build on top of them, customize, improve and share them with other artists. So first off, let's start with the smart wood material. So as you can see, when I open my smart material, I have this at the beginning. So this is where I'm going to plug in all the bait maps that I want to use. I'm going to transmit them through a teleport broadcast node throughout my project. Now if we go back outside, if you double click on your smart material, we can explore all the key node properties which I've promoted to the top of the material. All these properties here are being taken from these nodes inside the material through the wrench icon. By promoting all the necessary settings that you want to the top of our smart material, we don't really need to go inside, unless we are adding stuff or we need to tweak settings which we haven't added or promoted. First in my tool properties, I have my wood image. So if you don't like the pattern which is being used, you can change it to anything you want as long as the image is tileable. But if you don't want to change the image, you can stick with what I have here. You can also change the color. This is controlling a cloud node, so there are two colors, the lightest and the darkest. Then we have the size, which controls the overall scale of the texture pattern. You can adjust the stretching in both the U and V directions, which works like X and Y. And if you want equal stretching, just tweak them accordingly. Next, you can change the rotation and the roughness, as well as adjust the thickness of the wood lines for a lighter or darker look. You can also modify the bump map for more or less surface texture, depending on how much detail you want. For reflections, you can adjust how reflective a surface is and control the reflection pattern size and detail. The edgeware, which is based on a curvature map, lets you modify the edgeware size, color and intensity, making it either subtle or bold. Moving on to scratches and dirt, you can control the amount and appearance of dirt, including its roughness and color. The dirt mask allows precise control over where dirt appears and you can increase contrast for a more defined look. Finally, for dust, you can tweak the amount and size to get just the right amount or subtlety on your assets. And that wraps up the main settings for the smart wood texture. Next, we have the smart leather material I've created. When you open it, you'll see I've promoted several key properties to the top, all related to leather. There are other materials like steel and rubber, but those are for the shoe and will be removed in the downloadable version. Starting with customization, you can adjust the hue to change the leather color or dive deeper into the cloud node to fine tune the colors with precision. You can also tweak the contrast, roughness, and the size of the cloud pattern for more detail. If you want to adjust the reflection, you can make it more or less shiny, but be careful too much reflection can make it look like cheap plastic. You can also modify the bump amount and the color of the edgeware for a more polished or worn look. The edgeware mask controls how much wear shows through and you can switch between different patterns or loads your own from a grunge map collection. You can adjust the tile size, rotation and positioning to get the look you want. For dirt, you can change the color, the dirt mask and how much detail shows up. You also have control over contrast and precision using the curve mode. If you'd like to add your own details like a rip, you can easily dive into a material and create new masks or nodes for more customization. Last but not least, we have the cloth fabric, so you can change the size and the weave pattern with settings like the step over, tiles or weave width. You can also change the color, increase the dirt or edgeware amount, contrast, and adjust more in detail with the curve modes. So this was the last video I made for this second video, and I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching, my name is Paul Rang and I hope this introduction to Smart Materials helps you. For more information, check out learn.foundry.com slash Mari.